Thank you. So our motion today is this has believed that Spark investors should have open sourced the Iron Man suit. And of course we are not debating about the Iron Man or his suit. What we are debating about um, is the freedom of information, the free flow and access to information and knowledge. But I'm going to do the definition a little bit later. But let me start with just saying that we are debating today at CEU. And CEU has a motto we treat, there is no monopoly of truth. Um, and we absolutely agree with that. And not only is there no monopoly of truth, there is no monopoly of knowledge and information. And that's what we are going to talk about today. So, um, a bit of uh, definition and interpretation of the motion. Um, open sourcing the 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 whatever the the Iron Man suits code means um, uh, in our interpretation um, a free access to information, a free access to knowledge for everyone, as long as it serves the good, as long as it does not cause harm, and as long as it uh, as it. Uh, uh, doesn't threat state security or individual security or the security of a private or public uh, uh, entity, corporation, company, uh, etc. Uh, what we are going to talk about with my colleague today uh, is um, two main things. First of all, I am going to talk about that um, there is no monopoly of truth and that has two aspects. Um, the economical and political um, aspect of, of this motion, and my colleague is going to do, uh, talk about um, the social and educational side of it. So, let me start with the economical advantage that uh, making, making the flow of information um, free uh, gives. If you make the flow of if you make knowledge accessible, information accessible, um, it will basically create a booming economy. How? Um, if, it, if you make it open source, um, as to say, um, you make, you make um, people able to develop it, to work with it, to innovate with it further, to have new ideas, to, to gain new knowledge from it, and to develop, uh, to develop new um, technological ideas. Uh, to, to create new businesses, and but basically, um, information and knowledge does it. It, um, it helps the economy rise. Um, let me just give you an example of that. India uh, has, com in its econ economical development, has completely uh, uh, skipped the second sector. They didn't have an industrial era. From from being an agricultural state, they um, they immediately jump to being a third sector, an informational technology sector um, country. And how did they do that? They did they did that through education, through information, through providing their citizens um, uh, by the educational system um, sufficient information and knowledge um, to be able to to create a booming economy. And of course, India um, isn't uh, the part of Western societies. It's still developing, but it's developing very fast. And it's developing um, that um, instability, thanks to that free um, accessibility of knowledge and information. And we see a similar um, effect in Africa, where, where um, mobile phones and, and communication and change of information uh, by mobile phones have the, um, the poorest countries and nations on the earth uh, develop. Um, and, and that's done with information. So that is the economic perspective. perspective. Let me go on with the political advantages it gives. Um, um, there is no single truth. There, is, there are many answers to every single question, and uh, what we want is let people um, access every, every possible answer, every possible um, opinion and choice that they can have. And what the internet, what open sourcing, what giving out information, what Google, what Facebook does, is, um, is it makes people able to, uh, to get hold of all that information uh, and, um, and make uh, better decisions, make decisions that have, that have, um, that have um, uh, sufficient background, that have um, many information consumed before, um, and, and, and that, that um, results in, in a better political system. Because if you have access to knowledge, um, you, have, you, you will have a, a, a wider political perspective, a wider perspective in, in society, in your leaders, in, in, on, on the economy you're living in, and how your uh, political leaders are forming your country. And 
And um, a practical example of the country uh, is, chi is what China and Russia does. Their political uh, leaders and leading parties um, do know this effect and want, want to block the internet, block social media, block Google and the, all, all these information uh, and communicational sites because they know uh, if people are, are able to exchange knowledge and information and accept, access it, um, are, are going to start thinking and going to start questioning their leaders, questioning uh, and thinking about whether there are better answers to the problems their society is facing and possibly that their leaders and leading political parties aren't giving the right answers. So, <clears throat> so um, it's generally speaking, um, this access to information and knowledge is a democratizing tool, is helping um, all uh, both Western and developing societies to 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 rise economically and politically by by giving a wider perspective on the world um, to their citizens. So to wrap it up, um, um, I've been talking about um, the economical and political perspective, and uh, we see no reason why why uh, blocking information and blocking knowledge. Um, um, from the average person, as long as he, uh, he or she does not harm, uh, does harm with it, is a good thing economically, politically. And my colleague, colleague is going to el elaborate further um, with the social and educational aspect of the topic. We are proud to propose. Ladies and gentlemen, and thank you, Prime Minister. Uh, before I begin, I would like to. Uh, talk about three rebuttals of what the Prime Minister actually proposed. The first thing is that he talked about India, but India is a very fast developing economy. So if uh, the copyrights are not protected, what will happen is that the people in India will have no incentive to actually come up with new and better ideas. Secondly, you talk about access to information, but then again, what about the copyright? And uh, you also came up with the idea that as long as they are properly used, but then again, you cannot even um, uh, ensure that they are being properly used. Secondly, you talk about economical advantages. In economics, if you have a monopoly, you uh, certainly wish to have your uh, copyrights because you want to have your ideas, your uh, creativity, your imagination secure. Because if everybody else is using it, there's no, no, no point in coming up with better ideas. If, if Iron Man open sources his costume, what happens is that uh, maybe if tomorrow he has a better idea, something, a better creativity than Iron Man itself, what will happen is that he would be like, why should I even do it? Why? Because it's open source, everybody will use it, so I have no incentive to create it. Secondly, what happens in economics is that uh, when a new idea emerges, please thank you, not now. When a new idea emerges, it is the right of the inventor, it is the right of the person to actually, to actually have his secure rights, because uh, only if he has his secure rights, he will have the right, no thank you, he will have uh, the right to come up with better ideas in the future and to earn a profit in the present. Now, coming up to my own point, I have uh, four important points. Firstly, as I talked about previously as well, the copyright issue. Secondly, I will talk about the motivation, incentive, better ideas that I also mentioned before. And lastly, uh, what about the misuse tendency? Cannot, it can never be underestimated. And these points will be further elaborated by my partner. So let's begin with the copyrights. As I mentioned earlier, uh, if a company has a monopoly, if Iron Man enjoys a monopoly, he will be better uh, motivated to uh, do what he can better do with his uh, suit. He would be. Uh, if, what if we have a lot of? Um, if, what if we have a lot of Supermans out there? What if we, if we have a lot of Spidermans out there? What if we have a lot of Iron Mans out there? There would be a chaos in society. Yes. If you are a monopoly, you are not motivated to be better because you know that you are the only one on the market. No, if we are a monopoly, we will have the incentive to come up with better ideas and again, as I said before, because if we, if for example, you, uh, your ideas are out in the open, your ideas are being used, so you're like, why should I even bother to come up with better ideas in the future? I have no uh, revenues being generated in the future, yes please. 
If there are more Arab Muslims in North Africa, I guess that's better for the world. I mean, because then not just New York City, but any other city and every other part of this world will be as secure and safe, and the world will be a better place. Is that a question? Yeah. I mean, don't you think if there are more Arab Muslims around, the world will be a more secure place? Well, uh, okay. In answer to your question, <laughs> in answer to your question, let's see if there's a crime scene going on. So it's a duty of the Iron Man to come and save the world, conquer the world, save it. So if there are a lot of Iron Man's coming in, what will happen is that there will be chaos. The society will be disturbed. The entertainment world will be totally in a state of chaos. So we cannot afford that to happen. So then again, misuse of tendency cannot be estimated. For example, if uh, the Iron Man is actually open source, what will happen is that uh, people, probably evil geniuses, will come in. That's what happened in the Spider-Man movie. Um, they will come in and they will actually use it, use the costume to uh, have more crimes, to um, steal people's stuff, to um, make uh, more disturbance in the society. So this is what we have to prevent. So it's not a good idea to open source the, uh, the, the suit. So uh, then again, the political perspective is that if, yeah, if there's a lot of chaos going on in society, how can you ensure that uh, uh, the government or anybody else would come in and uh, reduce it? Because there's a lot of iron man in the society and you cannot actually do anything about that. There's a lot of disturbance going on. There's a lot of uh, chaos going on. So um, then again, lastly, my main argument is about the copyrights. Um, the blueprints, if they are available to people who have the capacity to use it, what happens is that um, Iron Man again will be uh, not willing to come up with a better Iron Man costume in the future. So um, he will be like, oh well, uh, why should I get an upgraded version of the Iron Man? Yeah, please come. Uh, I'm not sure if you're aware of uh, this concept called crowdsource innovation. So if there are so many more people who have an iron, iron suit of their own to research and develop upon, I guess there will be like many more better variations of Iron Man suits in the world, which could be used for a lot of different purposes. Not necessarily. But then again, how can you uh, come up with an argument against the idea that uh, people will use it against a uh, good idea uh, against the idea of uh, you know benefiting the society. What if they use it for evil purposes? Do you have an argument against that? Well, you don't seem to have that. So <laughs> the whole idea is to make sure that even if the Iron Man costume is not being open sourced, there's only one Iron Man in society. So uh, what we can do is that have have one Iron Man and um, let him take the thing. Thank you for the phone, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, as my uh, honorable partner said, knowledge is not something uh, that can be uh, privileged to some uh, kind of uh, uh, circles of people. And this is very important uh, even today in the, info in the year of information because. Uh, because uh, there is no monopoly uh, of, uh, of knowledge. As uh, we, uh, that uh, said, uh, the side we, we represent. But uh, before I uh, uh, go on further uh, with my uh, uh, speech, I would like to uh, rebut the uh, opening uh, opposition's uh, arguments. Uh, so they say that uh, um, there are uh, such a uh, notion as uh, copyright. Uh, yes, that's uh, that's the status quo. And uh, uh, but uh, what we think is that uh, uh, we speak in uh, generalities. And uh, um, of course, um, if uh, violating the copyright issue uh, is uh, not uh, not something that uh, can be. Uh, uh, allowed, but uh, as everything, uh, uh, it has uh, more uh, benefits to uh, uh, open sourcing the uh, knowledge, uh, and that uh, doesn't concern the copyright issue, we believe, because uh, there are uh, some common uh, notions as, such as uh, common credit and common license uh, to people, and um, uh, and they uh, also um, uh, allow people to uh, 
uh, developed further, uh, as my uh, partner said, and as uh, my speech is uh, about. Um, so, I, uh, in my speech, I would like to uh, deal with the social and educational aspects of uh, providing uh, an open source uh, information to basically everyone uh, in the world. And um, we uh, believe that, uh, again, that uh, knowledge is not something that is uh, only accessible for the privileged uh, uh, circles of, uh, or groups of people. And um, uh, we also said that uh, by open uh, sourcing uh, the uh, general knowledge, um, it uh, will be uh, available to the, not only the uh, middle class or the upper class of uh, the society who can uh, uh, allow themselves to buy it, but also the lower class, classes of societies. Um, and, uh, and even if uh, we uh, encounter examples of, uh, of, uh, be, uh, of uh, creating a product uh, free, uh, it doesn't, it, the benefits again uh, outweigh the, uh, the counter uh, side of it. And um, uh, if something is free, it's not, not necessarily worse. And uh, today I brought uh, uh, two uh, examples, but one of the one of them is the is um, IT related that uh, that is the uh, software, and the other is online education. Uh, but before I uh, move on, I would like uh, to take some questions if there is any. By sensing in all, don't you agree it's a part of copyright, and the innovator is getting benefits of what his product is in licensing. So, so it's not exactly free access to knowledge licensing. It's privileged access. Yeah, I yeah, see that uh, copyright, as I said, copyright is, uh, is a viable issue and uh, we uh, wouldn't uh, uh, bother that, uh, but uh, we speak in uh, generalities again. And um, so my first uh, point is that, uh, that uh, open sourcing uh, software such as uh, the well-known open office is a, a very uh, good and uh, a substantial alternative to uh, even Microsoft's uh, uh, Office or uh, other kinds of uh, software. Um, and uh, I'm sure you are more familiar with this uh, development. Uh, and uh, but in some respects, uh, it brought new features uh, and it can be innovated further, uh, which, uh, which is very beneficial for both the uh, cre uh, creators. Uh, and uh, I would like to uh, link back to the copyright issue because if I create something, even be it as a software or a picture or anything, uh, I, uh, I, I indicate that uh, as my own product. But that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, I um, Keep it, uh, uh, keep it, uh, keep them uh, as uh, as one that is uh, belongs to only me or only the circles of people that I I am allowed to uh, use or watch or anything, and um, that is a very important point. And another example I uh, reference to is the online education, which is needless to say is a um, very powerful. Uh, um, development of uh, the 21st century and uh, if we consider that it is the common interest of the humankind to uh, have uh, such uh, possibilities and um, uh, for a specific example there is a Coursera which is a very uh, effective uh, tool for basically everybody uh, uh, in the world and uh, there are a couple of research uh, which uh, proving uh, my point um, and also, uh, also it, uh, it uh, developing uh, further by the uh, open sourcing uh, knowledge. Uh, so summing up my uh, speech and also my team's uh, uh, case, uh, we believe that uh, again uh, there is no monopoly or uh, uh, certain right uh, there is no monopoly uh, on uh, either knowledge or the truth, and uh, and uh, today we brought to you uh, some. Uh,
economics, uh, some examples from uh, economics, uh, education, and uh, uh, the social aspects of it. So, uh, for all of these reasons, I thank you for this. In the name of that free flow of access to information, what will you privilege? Will you privilege stagnation of progress? Will you stifle all progress in the name of free flow and access to information? This is not what modern democracies are meant for. And to that extent, the innovators of a product, the creators of a product, to the right that they have created their product, they should have a monopoly over it. And they should be entitled to the fruits of it. To the fruits of it. Sorry. Well, it is a common concept that every man is entitled to the fruits of his labor. And essentially, if you are depriving him of that, there will be no incentive for him to create. And essentially, this is where my second rebuttal comes in. They said, why should we have copyright at all? I think licensing, compulsory licensing by the government can help. But however, the royalties generated by the copyright are far more than what government ends up giving you through a system of compulsory licensing. And to that extent, the innovators of a product, staff industries in this case, who have the specialized knowledge of the Iron Man suit, will be deprived of the profits which they are legitimately entitled to because of the virtue of possessing that specialized knowledge. And if you do not give, me, give, him, give them their, that, there is no incentive for creation, innovation and progress and thus you are stifling all progress and development. Moreover, the government today has failed to show us how they are going to prevent the misuse of such open source or open access to knowledge. How will they ensure that it will be secure, it will not be misused and there, there will always be these few bad, bad, few bad men who will use technology for which is harmful for the development of the entire mankind and this is what we are trying to prevent and this is how our model will make more sense than the one that you are proposing of making knowledge available to all while we agree that it's a very noble virtue and it should be cherished but this is not something that can be done in this case where there is a growing amount of science and technology involved they gave the example of India India is a developing economy why India is a developing economy? because it has free flow of access free flow or access to information. However, they fail to forget, uh, they conveniently forget that India still has a very strong copyright legislation which is very strong, which gives a lot of protection to the creators, to the innovators and it gives very, very limited rights of access to such knowledge. And this is what exactly we are see seeking to demand. Now, my essential point is that even if you try, then I move on to second substantive, my second substantive. Even if assuming that this knowledge is not being available, made available to all, but the products are of the knowledge are still being made available to everyone. And this is where there is progress. Yes. So do you accept that the provider of, of AIDS cure, uh, a, a monopoly of medicine, uh, is okay uh, having their prices up in the sky and African people not being able to purchase it because they have a monopoly? This is where the difference lies and this is what you are trying to forget. Medicine is something very, very important. However, what we are talking about in this case is specialized costume. Technology which doesn't even concern that much of the mankind one second, let me complete. Which doesn't even concern that much of the mankind and where two thirds of the globe does not have access to this technology. So you are talking about internet context where two thirds of the people in the globe do not have access to internet, where African regions do not know what the concept of internet is like. Medicines are something that is needed by people in Africa because that country, that continent has the largest number of people being affected with AIDS. So I think you need to maintain this difference between what can be licensed, what can be made available to all and what cannot. And I think technology is not something that can be made available to all or is not something where you can have open access. Yes, sir. Okay, so this technology, so if it's benefiting people and if it's, let's say, this suit could have probably saved lives in Africa and uh, so it's benefiting people, but since it's technology, uh, we will not make it open access. The here, the priority of needs become important, which is what you are tending to forget. The priority of needs in this case, I don't think you can extend it to that logic. However, what the limit, however, how, let me respond to that and if you could like stop smiling on this. Uh, however, what you fail to forget is the knowledge here, even though privatized, the products of the knowledge are being available to all. So Iron Man's costume is not there. However, you can still see Iron Man, you can still enjoy what Iron Man is doing on the screen and Order. in some way it's 
actually uh, in some way it's actually reaching to you however which is not the case with the AIDS medicine uh, if I'm actually getting what you're saying, uh, if, if, if I can understand you correctly, you mean to say it's like Africans are too illiterate to understand how to use the Iron Man suit, so basically we just can't give it to them. So, I mean, I'm sure like, there'll be a time when people in Africa will be having an accent and, you know, will be illiterate enough to use it. Are you going you to deny that? You are making a generalization, you are making a generalization in that case, Mr. Speaker, because in it is a factual scenario that Africa does not have access to internet. And it is still a factual scenario that Africa has the most number of people being affected with AIDS. And which is why where lies the difference. So what we are saying is we as a democracy completely cherish the values of free flow of information and access. However, we also cherish the need to maintain continuous progress and development. And this can only be ensured if you provide incentive to create. And this incentive to create can only be provided if you provide enough protection in the form of copyright laws and if you give them enough profits which they are entitled to through these mechanisms. And also please show us how you are going to ensure that your technology is not going to be misused. Your open access to software is not going to be misused. Thank you. Okay, with the permission of the chair. Uh, so the first speaker from the second part of the government. Now to start with, let me uh, kind of make sense of what uh, our uh, honorable opposition has come up with. They have spoken a lot of things about stagnation of progress, how you know, monopoly, there is still a need for some monopoly, how creators don't get fruits of their creations, and something about, you know, yeah, we want to give out like free stuff, but only what they need, and you know, still want to hold back on, you know, most of it. I still don't understand it. Uh, the first part of the government here very clearly illustrated the benefits of open source technology, not just technology, but anything. You know, the benefits of open sourcing everything for the world in terms of, you know, economic equality, political equality, social equality, educational equality. And this is the way ahead for a truly globalized equalitarian society, which this whole world is heading towards. Now, let us tell you what we have in store for you. We are going to show you exactly how, you know, we believe that open source technology provided with a certain degree of regulation against its misuse will be the best way ahead. Now, let me start with some of our uh, constructors here. Now, we believe that, you know, open sourcing something, say, for instance, the Iron Man suit today, which actually um, stands for the most cutting edge technology in the world, will herald a new era in, you know, open sourcing things. It would set precedent. So that today, if we speak of, you know, open sourcing the most cutting edge technology, we are definitely going to see open sourcing, not just technology, but everything, drug research, you know, educational research, and that, would act, that is actually going to unleash a whole plethora of advantages and you know benefits for marginalized people all over the world. Yes, ma'am. Do you think the start needs to be made only with technology, or can it not be made with other? Things? I guess that's what the idea. That's the whole idea is what we are debating about. But then certainly not what you seem to say. You seem to think, yeah, let's just start with something that's basic and what they need, and we can still hold on to the technology and the more advanced part. We believe let's go and you know open source the advanced part right now because well, this world has, been, has had enough of you know infighting over copyrights and because of which millions of people are in Africa are dying because they're, they're not getting medicines. Millions of you know people are you know are not having access to you know educational research and whatnot. So we believe that okay, open sourcing technology like this at uh, this point of time is the best thing that can happen to the world right now. Secondly, as I said, you know the uh, you said that there's not not gonna be you know any research because there would be no incentive for research uh, for the company which created the first place. Sorry, ma'am, I told you the concept of crowd source innovation. The more people who have access to that technology, we that means we'll be actually having like many more researchers. If there were like 10 researchers working for staff industries, there will be like millions of researchers out there in the world who will be working on you know further improving and developing that Iron Man suit. So this is going to lead to exponentially an exponential rise, an exponential and rapid rise in you know techno technological development, and we will see much more awesome Iron Man suits in the world. Thirdly, we will see, you know, we have known like, you know, MNCs like Start Industries, which actually are a symbol for a lot of, you know, rich IT and tech giants today, who have concentrated huge amount of power and wealth, who actually have huge lobbies and influence political decisions in the world. Open sourcing technology today would see an end to that monopoly, would see an end to that concentration of power and wealth, and would herald a new era of equality in the corporate world, in the private sector, and throughout, you know, the globe. And this will, this is, this is only going to make our, make are well more equal and more global. Uh, fourth, now you said uh, people who have genuinely created stuff, you know, and because they've not been able to get co copyrights, that they're not getting enough revenues. Sorry, ma'am, I don't agree with you. 
Let, let's take the most simple example today. iTunes, Netflix. The fact that, you know, even though I can buy music for free anywhere, you know, uh, but there's still iTunes and it's still running and still making huge profits means that, yes, they are being able to get their money and get a fair amount of it. Like, there are, you know, people who, there are been rich artists. I mean, they, they're like, you know, uh, artists and directors and actors and all who, who are really rich and who are getting paid good, a fair share of what they created. But the thing is, like, you know, so it's, so what we, are, what we are saying is that they, it's not that the system is unfair to them, they are still getting a fair share, but the massive amount of benefits which, you know, millions and millions of people all across the globe get by getting free access to that work, that certainly outweighs those, you know, uh, those humongous uh, greedy benefits that, those humongous greedy extra benefits that you want to give away to the creators, you know, even after they are getting that fair share. So I think, you know, like, we, people are getting the fair share and, you know, there's no need that, you know, we don't need to be, like, super greedy and call for, you know, like, them getting all the money and in that process, limiting access uh, to that uh, creation for millions across the globe. Further, now, actually getting to, you know, as I said, uh, one reason how crowdsourcing innovation is going to further research another would be, uh, open sourcing technology would enable people to, uh, you know, uh, procure the basic framework on which, you know, uh, that technology or the creation is based. So for instance, a lot of countries in the world, you know, to, in order for them to create any significant research uh, product, they would have to start from scratch. They would have to, you know, create the laboratories and, you know, kind of start, you know, uh, like uh, creating stuff from the very A, B, C and, you know. And so this is, this whole, you know, uh, technological inequality is going to be driven away if we bring in, you know, if we open source technology like, uh, uh, you know, the Iron Man, right, right now. So basically people, everybody will have the basic framework uh, of framework for research and then you know they will be able to build upon it. So it is going to give everyone an equal footing and this will only make not just in the academic research but any other you know uh, technology. Yes ma'am. How are you going to regulate sir? Yes I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. You said I mentioned that you know this will be all uh, conducted under a regulated framework. So you know that's what I'm saying. So the point here is like you know sometimes research kind of doesn't accept it because somebody has been sitting upon the copyright for millions and millions of years and just because they are too dumb or maybe like uh, their minds are saturated, they are not able to work and if only like somebody else in some other part of the world could have the access, could have, a, could get access to that basic framework and then you know use his own intelligence that can you know create a new wonderful product altogether which can have massive other benefits in other parts of the world. So we are looking at you know immense benefits which clearly outweigh whatever profits that you have in mind. So as I said, my uh, deputy here would be uh, coming up with uh, a model through which we want to, our case, which is basically our case extension here in terms of open sourcing with regulation, which will actually prevent such mis misuse and will entail a free and fair, uh, you know, benefit, uh, free, free and fair benefits for one, uh, for one and for all. Uh, thank you so much. about uh, this uh, very important and theoretical question. Uh, well, uh, the freedom of, uh, of information is a very important uh, uh, point, but uh, the respect of ownership and uh, uh, the respect of the freedom is uh, also important uh, and, uh, and um, in, in this uh, question. Well, uh, why these uh, elements uh, are important? Uh, we think that uh, the respect of the freedom has uh, really good uh, consequences, uh, create a rela reliable market and environment, which is very important for the international companies uh, to invest in, in uh, develop, uh, developing countries to, uh, in, in a free, uh, free phase. So uh, we think that uh, that um, uh, um, ob obligated uh, equality uh, to create uh, equal equality in an obligated way uh, in long term, uh, this will not create uh, equality uh, between uh, developing and developed countries. Uh, for example, um, uh, uh, this is the point uh, that uh, that the respect of the freedom can um, can contribute uh, to the um, international companies to to 
we invest in, for example, Africa or, or developing uh, countries. Um, well, uh, so, um, so uh, in this uh, theoretical question, um, it is very important to, um, to the developed uh, countries contribute to the poorer or developing countries to uh, help them to to um, to make uh, uh, to can uh, to help them to uh, can gain uh, the advantages and uh, um, of the of the uh, resources. Uh, we can uh, uh, we uh, we could hear that uh, many more resources all over the world uh, can uh, can uh, create an equality uh, in the in the world. Well, um, uh, we think that uh, it is very important uh, to uh, no thanks uh, really, uh, that um, that uh, there are a lot of countries which can which can gain uh, which can gain the advantages uh, of the resources and uh, they can uh, use these resources to to um, to manage. Um, it uh, to uh, develop their country. So uh, it is important that uh, that uh, that uh, companies in a free way uh, um, um, have them, but but not an obligated uh, method. So the, the state uh, and uh, and by the legislative uh, um, actions uh, can uh, can serve this uh, problem. Yes. So how, how can developing countries develop without the technology? Um, yes, but for example, uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, countries in the world where, uh, where um, however, we can uh, we can um, we can make uh, factories and technologies, uh, companies to uh, to. Um, to develop uh, these countries, if, if there is some uh, human resources or, or other uh, important uh, resources, they can't uh, uh, gain the advantages. So, um, so we think that uh, that uh, um, the respect of the ownership and the freedom uh, can is a, in, in a long term uh, it is the best um, solution. Uh, to uh, make equality uh, in the world, uh, in the society of the, in the world. Um, yes, and um, uh, so, for, for example, um, it is very important to uh, these companies, for example, by uh, uh, using uh, FDI uh, investment and uh, and. Uh, by by a free pay, so uh, because uh, they uh, um, take it important to uh, have uh, a poorer uh, societies and, and uh, countries, um, so uh, we can't obligate it to use it, uh, but um, but um, uh, um, the um, yeah uh, uh, but but in a free. Yes. Should we not make it obligatory for them to actually lift the copyright on products which are extremely essential for you know sustaining life, like it can be essential technology or essential drugs, even that are increasingly you know in demand in developing countries? Um, well, uh, yes. Um, um, we think that, for example, like you are saying, or or the, these uh, big. Um, these big countries and, and power in the world, um, they they can show a very very good uh, uh, example. How, for example, these uh, companies, these uh, transnational and multinational companies, um, uh, um, uh, uh, manage uh, these uh, program. Um, so uh, we think that uh, that. Um, the respect of the uh, to some of, uh, to respect the ownership and the freedom uh, in the uh, long term, it it is more important than uh, than create a, a 
quality uh, by an obligated uh, manner. So, uh, very good morning to the members of this house. Uh, so, I believe, no. uh, good afternoon, sorry. So, I believe this debate has taken a turn and it is my job as the government whip to probably bring this back from where we originally started and to just show things in perspective. So, uh, starting off with, uh, this house believes that Stark industry should have open sourced the Iron Man suit. Now, uh, the government has here tried to show that the Iron Man suit is, and this is where I draw a distinction with the opening government, we believe that the Iron Man suit is not just simply anything we are talking about. We are talking about any random technology. We are talking about here a revolutionized way of doing things. Here is a suit which is doing things which has not been done before. It's doing these incredible things. It's made of iron. It runs on nuclear power. So it's clearly environmentally friendly. So, uh, so we are talking about open sourcing such a thing. Uh, we're not talking about any uh, open, and on, honestly, uh, I don't even know how the debate went on to medicines because last I checked, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure drugs can't be open sourced because that would defeat the purpose. In the sense, if you imagine one drug and everyone is trying to do the little bits to it, clinical trials, go for a toss then. I'll take that. You have compulsory licensing for drugs, by which they make a recommendation to us. But then open source is different from compulsory licensing, you've got to draw the distinction here. I'm so sorry if two are getting muddled up. I'm sorry. So, uh, so I believe that it is my job here to probably bring us back to the ground and probably things show things in perspective as to this technology which is revolution, revolutionized things. Okay, I will be quickly summing up some important arguments which have been made from the government side. Firstly, uh, the factor of the creativity innovation as to how open access will probably, uh, creativity will take a beating, innovation will not be seen uh, and development will not take place. Well, you have the examples and I am here strictly talking about open source only. Uh, you, we have Chrome, we have Linux, we have the VLC player uh, that we all use, uh, the original thing. Uh, we have Android, which is again an open source platform. So a uh, development is taking place, crazy things are happening on Android, honestly a lot. And the amount of applications and the amount of platforms that people are coming up with is just, it's, it's mind boggling. So you can't say that your creativity and innovation will be taken a beating because uh, if you open up a certain thing to open source. So firstly and secondly, sorry. Uh, uh, um, and here we are talking about Stark Industries. So here is an industry and here it probably represents many other industries of the world which have this amazing technology and there is concentration of power and wealth in one. When we can benefit so many others, you want it all to be concentrated on this pinpoint industry. What, what happens to terms like benefits of mankind, benefits of humanity? What happens to, uh, what happens to these big words that people keep throwing around? Because uh, Stark Industries owns the license to it, they will not make it open source. I believe that that's why the closing government believes that uh, Stark Industries should have made it, uh, should have made the suit open source. I'm sorry. Okay. Now another point which I felt was lacking, but I feel uh, necessary to bring out right now is uh, which has not been explored at all in this debate is uh, piracy. You're counterfeiting uh, by driving things by giving them compulsory license. I'm sorry, by giving them licenses, by giving them a copyright by giving them uh, patents, what, what happens to your piracy, your black market, what happens to your counterfeiting? Uh, I'm sorry but things like these will continue, probably bringing them down to open source will probably if nothing help matters. So you might have the case of uh, children or people buying fake Iron Man suits. Imagine the disaster, imagine the nuclear reactor going wrong and that one, that would actually cost lives. So your piracy argument is again I believe something which wasn't explored at depth. Lastly, I will also uh, just sum up the debate in the sense that uh, this side of the government differs from the opening government so as to say that ultimately we, we do realize that I am pretty sure that the Iron Man suit was also manufactured in China or Taiwan. So basically you have this uh, instances of all these right holders, the sitting in developed countries in the US, in probably Europe, I'm sorry if I offended anyone, but which ultimately all your, all your raw material, all your production is ultimately taking place in developing countries like China. This is where I'd like to bring in your point of developing countries and developed countries mismatch. I totally agree with you and we can see why this is happening. Probably the uh, open sourcing those technologies would probably enable the people in India so as to develop their own and become less dependent on these corporations which are situated at these high corridors. Okay, moving on and lastly uh, bring uh, as my, uh, as the, I'm <coughs> sorry, as the closing government, as my co-speaker said, one important, how much time do I have left? Um, okay, I will quickly deal with how uh, reasonable restrictions and how it cannot be exploited. Now, another argument which the opposition made was, what, what if 
these technologies, what if this amazing Iron Man suit is open to exploitation? I mean, in, you have these uh, bad people out there, the villains who probably steal them and just like use them against me. Well, uh, there are certain mechanisms that can be developed. Uh, specifically speaking, I cannot make a general statement as to, but uh, specifically speaking about the Iron Man suit, so if you have this uh, scenario in which it is open access, a lot of countries are benefiting from it. You have, uh, it's a strong suit, so you probably can use it for things you normally cannot. It's, uh, like I mentioned, powered in nuclear energy, so it's environmentally safe. What if it lands up in the hands of the Taliban, or the Al-Qaeda, or the Syrian government, or uh, the pirates, uh, I'm sorry, pirates of the coast of Somalia. I mean, what? It, it's normal to assume that. Well, you, you can always have things like probably a kill switch, a remote kill switch that would probably deactivate those. So you have enough, uh, if you probably just put your heart and mind to it, I'm sure, uh, reasonable restrictions can be put on these open source technologies so they're not exploited just by anyone and anyone, uh, anyone and everyone off the street. So I believe uh, those yeah, restrictions are taken care of there. Okay, uh, last minute. So, uh, as, and uh, we were just rebutting a few points that were made by the opposition earlier. As far as idea protection in countries like India go, that is a very recent development and we can see how country is still struggling to probably incorporate those. Your codes are struggling, your legislation is lacking. So, a stronger idea protection just imposed on countries is not necessarily a good thing. Probably open source is again the right way in that regard. And that is why uh, we believe that uh, it should be open source. Uh, lastly, uh, the profits angle has been rebutted by my co-speaker here when he's mentioned of iTunes and Netflix probably making a equal amount of profits uh, being on the internet in a viable where people can download songs for free. So I believe that corporations will not suffer profit-wise and they will actually be doing the world of good by uh, if things, if revolutionized systems, if revolutions like the Iron Man suit are made open source, I believe uh, we all have to gain from it. And that is the reason why uh, I proudly uh, propose this motion. Thank you. Thank you and good afternoon everyone. Uh, today's afternoon motion was that the start industry should uh, uh, should share uh, 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 should guarantee the open sourcing of the um, to to sum up the, the main points of the opposition. Um, at first, I would like to emphasize that uh, yes, we do agree that the free freedom of information and the no monopoly, monopoly of the truth is a vital uh, 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 reasoning and a vital argument in this uh, uh, debate. But we also would like to emphasize that, that what kind of information are we talking about? What is this information? It is not, not a simple public uh, interest, uh, in, in our opinion, to, to uh, share this information because this information is mainly uh, uh, is, is usable to, to create such a, a weapon and to create such a, a, a stuff that can be used in, in uh, quite uh, dangerous methods to and um, well, um, to, to taking into consideration the, the rights of the ownership and the copyright, uh, I would like to emphasize that uh, also, um, oh, as the opposition has already mentioned, that the fruit of your own labor is your fruit. So you uh, please let, let us, let the world has, uh, let the world have the. The monopoly of their own idea. Those people who who had put uh, work and, and time in, in their uh, development, they should bear these fruits and they should gain from it at first. And after, if they are willing and if they are uh, and if they, if, if it is their intention, then uh, they have the possibility to use it for the the uh, benefits of the mankind. And. As the, um, as the closing government mentioned that the, this uh, misuse and, and, and also the dangers of the uh, misuse of this uh, uh, open sourcing is, uh, is, uh, is quite an irrelevant, uh, or not an irrelevant, but uh, 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 a questionable uh, um, thing in, in their uh, argumentation. 
Um, well, we would we would like to emphasize that uh, yes, it is very it can be very dangerous. Just as as uh, developed is this uh, suit, just as much and just as uh, just at, at this uh, extent, uh, it's <coughs> uh, dangerous for the world and can can be dangerous for uh, for uh, letting it uh, into bad hands. So. Um, to, um, to strengthen our uh, opposite, opposing uh, views, uh, I, should, I should again uh, emphasize that, uh, that uh, it, it's, uh, it's, it's a right and, and a nice uh, uh, th uh, uh, so that the freedom of information and the, the knowledge and the information are, are highly beneficial for the society. But also we have to uh, take into consideration the the, uh, the rights of those people and, and the rights of of uh, these de developments that are uh, that have has the core and that uh, uh, and, and who are uh, responsible for it. And, and to uh, conclude with uh, the necessity of the education and the information on technologies uh, effects on the on the world's development and, uh, and the benefits of it, uh, we would like to uh, to add that uh, not only by uh, <coughs> opening and by uh, guaranteeing open source uh, to this IOM benefit <coughs> can and through this example by uh, taking such a precedent into uh, into uh, action not not only these uh, um, uh, possibilities can can help and develop the world but, but also uh, in other ways and in, in educational and other informational uh, ways uh, we can we can also uh, achieve good uh, aims do you think uh, a profit-driven monopolistic company would ever volunteer to give out information and technology? I don't think so, because it's it's also their interest to have a, have a kind of good reputation, a good name. And of course, not every, not the most evil profit-oriented companies are are uh, often uh, in this uh, situation. But I think it can be. Uh, achieved by the education to, to get this philosophy in their uh, company mm, uh, philosophy or, or to, to uh, get them adapted to this. So, so um, I would also uh, I, I would like uh, again to, to sum up um, that, uh, that the, the, the proper use of this uh, uh, open source uh, uh, suits or any other similar stuffs and, and also the, the ownership uh, problem are, are really such uh, concerns that uh, that uh, that uh, raise our attention to to oppose this uh, motion. Thank you.